for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the word, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. Clock. Beamer, how would you like to help me fix this clock? I can't, Miss Jones. I'm too busy. Busy, 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 busy. Beamer, the passengers will miss the train if they don't know the time. Exactly. And while they're waiting for the next train, they're going to come to my arcade and put the money in my machine. Pretty smart, eh? You really are a scheming schemer. I got to do what I got to do, and so do I. Uh, Mr. Jones, uh, by the way, I have right here a brand new antique teapot. It, uh, it just needs a little bit of polish, and I'm going to sell it to you for $5. Oh, really? That teapot's a mess. All right, $4, but that's my final offer. $3, but that's my final, final offer. But you were going to throw it out. There's a hole in the bottom. No, no. This is so that you can uh, pour two cups of tea at once. All right, $2. That's my final, 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 final offer. Don't leave this right here so that you can gaze upon it and change your mind. Ah, uh, Matt and Tanya, my two favorite children. Hi, Steamer. <laughs> Darn shoelaces. down there and watch that the ladder doesn't slip. Hey, Matt, could you get me that big screwdriver in the toolbox? Thank you. What's wrong with it? It's broken. Watch this. <laughs> That's neat. I like that. <laughs> me too, but it doesn't tell us the time, and there's no way to tell if the train's on time if all the clock does is make music. Now, where's that screwdriver? things or poor things, like my granny used to say. Let my life be like a piece of string. Long, strong, and soft at the end. <laughs> Your old granny never said that. Go oh, on. <laughs> You're right. I made that one up myself. Not bad, but a beginner. Why, well, thanks. Hey, you know what I need? Some oil. I'll be right back. Once upon a time, a long time ago, Stacy's granny used to run this station. That's when I met her. Why, she could tell you which train was coming just by its whistle. She always took care of her trains and her passengers. And she was very good at having fun. Better than most people, in fact. That's silly. Everyone knows how to have fun. That's not true, Tanya. Do you mind if I call you Tanya Lasagna? <laughs> good. No, you see, everybody likes to have fun. But not everybody knows how to go about it. Stacy does, and so did her grandmother. What'd she do with me? Why, she used to play cat's cradle all of the time. Oh, I know how to do that. Hmm. Who'd she used to play with? Who else? Your Aunt Stacy. Help me stop! Uh, wait a minute. Hey! Well done, Matt. It makes you feel good when you help someone out, doesn't it? Over on the island of Sodor, the engines all say it makes you feel really useful. 
Well, you'll see what I mean. Every day, Sir Topham Hatt came to the station to catch his train. Hello, he always said to Thomas. Don't let the silly freight cars tease you. Remember, you have an important job as a special helper in the train yard. There were lots of freight cars, and Thomas worked very hard pushing and pulling them into place. There was also a small coach and two strange things his driver called trains. That's the breakdown train, he told Thomas. The cranes are for lifting heavy things, like engines and coaches and freight cars. One day, Thomas was in the yard. Suddenly, he heard an engine whistling. Help! Help! A freight train came rushing through much too fast. The engine was James, and he was frightened. His freight blocks were on fire. They're pushing me, they're pushing me, he panted. On, on, laughed the freight cars, still whistling. Help! Help! Poor James disappeared. I'd like to teach those freight cars a lesson, said Thomas the tank engine. Soon came the alarm. James is off the line. The breakdown train, quickly. Thomas was coupled on and off they went. Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, 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 he puffed. He wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those freight cars and their tricks. I hope poor James isn't hurt. James's driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Never mind, James, they said. It was those silly freight cars on your old wooden brakes that caused the accident. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled away the unhurt freight cars. Oh dear, oh dear, they groaned. Serves you right, serves you right, for Thomas. He was hard at work, puffing backwards and forwards all afternoon. This will teach you a lesson. This will teach you a lesson, he told the freight cars. And they answered, yes, it will. Yes, it will. They left the broken cars. Then with two cranes, they put James back on the rails. tried to move, but he couldn't, so Thomas helped him back to the shed. <whistles> Sir Topham Hatt was waiting anxiously for them. Well, Thomas, he said, I've heard all about it, and I'm very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. James shall have some proper brakes and a new coat of paint, and you shall have a branch line all to yourself. Oh, thank you, sir, said Thomas. Now Thomas is as happy as can be. He has a branch line and two coaches called Annie and Clarabo. He pumps proudly backwards and forwards with them all day. He is never lonely. Edward and Henry stop quite often and tell him the news. Gordon is always in a hurry, but never forgets to say poop poop, and Thomas always whistles peep peep in return. I bet Thomas felt really important when he was pulling the breakdown train. Oh no, he was worried about James. He wanted to help him. I wish there was someone who would help us figure out what to do with the rest of the string. You'll have to help each other with that, I'm afraid. Now, please excuse me for a minute. There's my house. I must go in it. It's time to share a carrot with my parrot. And my spaghetti 
needs stretching. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Aunt Stacy wants to show me how to make flowers out of string. Flowers out of string? No. I'll show you. Looks like you've made real progress. We've made flowers. String flowers. You know, you can do a lot with string. Sometimes string can do a lot with itself. That doesn't make sense. It will in a minute. Just look at this. <laughs> I've been thinking of this song all morning. Woke up with it in my head. Can't get it out. Hey, man, it's groove time. Like, go get that nickel, Dee Dee, and let's well. Forget it, Vito. She's got all her pots and pans in the right position for once. She's all set up nice here. That's right, Tex. You go get it, Tito. Well, I was set up all nice, too. Are you nice and comfy there, Rex? Why, I sure am. Thank you, Tex. You're welcome, Rex. Okay. Everybody all comfy and nice. Good. Now, railroad corral. A one and a two. We are up in the morning, here down in the day, and the grub wagon's busy, and flapjacks in play, while the herd is astir, over hillside and swell, with the night riders rounding them into the trail. Shake up your cinches, shake up your reins, come wake up your bronco, and break for the plains. Come rouse those red steers from the long chaparral, for the outfit is off for the railroad corral. Must reach evening at last When the hills are all climbed The creeks are all past And the tired herd droops In the yellowing light Let them loaf if they will For the railroad's in sight Goodbye to the steers The long chaparral it's all in the drive to the railroad corral. What are you doing, Grandpa? What does it look like I'm doing? Trying to fix the sign. The train broke. What kind of sign is it? 
It's a sign for the ticket booth. John Stacy said it was here when the station first opened a long time ago. What's all that stuff? Solder. It's supposed to fix the chain, but it's not working. Maybe it'll work this time. What have you kids been doing? Mr. Conductor showed us some string that moved around. And he also told us the story of Thomas the Tank Engine in the game. Uh-huh. Sounds like an interesting fellow. Is it done yet? No. Watch your paws and back up. Give me some room. Uh-huh. It worked. Shining Time Station. Trains from here to everywhere. thinking too much about solder. String. Match the ticket. been busy. Of course, string can be a great problem solver. Now, why does that remind me of James? Thomas's friend, the train. You can't fix the train with the string. I didn't say you could. Good, because you can't. It was a shoelace. A shoelace? And a newspaper. Really? Really. They're very clever on the island of Sodor. Almost as clever as your grandpa, Miss Tanya Lasagna. Let me show you. James was enjoying his life on the island of Sodor, but he still had a lot to learn. You're a special mixed traffic engine, said Sir Top of Hat. You can pull coaches or freight cars quite easily, but you must learn by your mistakes. James knew what Sir Top of Hat meant. He could well remember that dreadful accident on his first day. Be careful with the coaches, James, said kind little Edward. They don't like being bumped. Everyone came to admire James. I'm a really splendid engine, he thought, and suddenly let off steam. A shower of water fell on Sir Topham's nice new top hat. Just then, the conductor blew his whistle and James thought they had better go. Go on, go on, he puffed to Edward. Don't push, don't push, replied Edward. The coaches were grumbling too. Don't go so fast, don't go so fast. But James didn't listen. When at last they stopped at the next station, two coaches were beyond the platform. They had to go back to let the passengers out. But no one seemed to know about the Topham's new hat, so James felt happier. Presently, they came to the station where Thomas was waiting with his two coaches. Hello, James, said Thomas. Feeling better? That's right. Oh, that's my conductor's whistle. I must go. I don't know what Sir Topham Hat would do without me to run this branch line. And he puffed off importantly. Edward and James passed the field where James had had his accident. The fence was mended and the cows were back again. Ended their journey and rested before setting off for home. James was still wondering what Sir Topham would have to say about his new hat.
Next morning, he spoke severely to James. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat and have you painted blue. James didn't like that at all. He was very rough with the grumbling coaches as he brought them to the platform. Don't talk, come on, he called to them. Gordon never has to fetch his own coaches, he thought to himself, and he's only painted blue. To make James even more cross, this time no one came near him. I'll show them, he thought. They think Gordon is the only engine who can pull coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. You're going too fast, you're going too fast, replied the coaches. James laughed and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop, they said. We're going to stop. What's the matter? James asked his driver. The brakes are hard on. Leak in the pipe, most likely. You've banged the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. How shall we mend it? said the conductor. We'll do it with newspaper and a leather bootlace, replied the driver. Well, where is the bootlace coming from? asked the conductor. Ask the passengers, said the driver. You have a leather bootlace there, I see, sir, said the conductor to a smartly dressed man. Please give it to me. I won't, said the man. Then, said the conductor, I'm afraid the train will just stop where it is. The passengers all said what a bad railway it was. Then they told the man how bad he was instead. Everyone was very cross. At last, he handed his laces over. The driver tied a pad of newspaper tightly round the hole in the brake pipe, and James was able to pull the train. But he was a sadder and wiser James, and took care never to bump coaches again. James's fault that happened. It wasn't even the coach's fault. It was because he had those bad brakes. That's true. But if he hadn't been banging the coaches about... Oh, hooey. Oh. Let's see. No. Oh, we just came out used it for the jukebox. No. I remember. <laughs> May I help? No, 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 Mr. Conductor. I have to learn to do these repairs by myself. Oh, I just remembered where it is. You mean the oil? How did you know I was looking for the oil? Just a lucky guess. Sorry, wrong trunk. The oil isn't out there. Don't tell me where it is. All right, tell me, tell me, tell me. Where is it? Look on the floor in the ticket booth. I saw you leave it there yesterday. That clock has made me late for every one of my appointments for the last nine years, three months, eight hours, two minutes, and 23 seconds. Mr. Conductor. Well, as a matter of fact, I made that one up. Not bad for a beginner. A million, you're welcome. Miss Jones, oh, Miss Jones. So long, Mr. Conductor. You're losing your marbles, kiddo. Talking to furniture, very bad sign. Oh, it's you, schemer. That's right, the one and only. Oh, Ooh, these darn shoelaces. Why don't you try tying them? Can't, too busy. Besides, every time I tie my shoelaces, boom, they come undone again. Watch. Now look what you made me do. <laughs> what is the sense of tying your shoelaces when they break off right in your hand? You know what? I do not need shoelaces. <laughs> this is not my fault. I'm a businessman. I don't know anything about shoes. 
My field is uh, vending machines, games, and money. By the way, kids, did you go to the arcade today? Hey, hey, uh, what's going on here? I don't like secrets, unless I'm telling them. No! That's our string, and there's only a little bit left. We wanted to do something special with it. You'd be helping someone that special, isn't it? Sam Stacy, it's Schemer! When's the next train to Lucky Lake? In 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Hey, look, she's not wearing any shoes. See, some people know how to live. <laughs> oh, kids, why don't you give Schemer the string? He'll be grumbling about his shoes forever. Okay. Here's Schemer. You can use this for your shoelace. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. One dollar, Miss Jones, my final offer, one dollar. No, thank you, Steve. 50 cents. Free for 50 cents. I think I'll pass. Here is a present from me to you. It's nice. Of me, that is. <laughs> what do we do with this? Well, this is what I like to do the best. Take one silly hoop it and put it with one old useless what's it. And make something really special. What? A flower pot. Where should I put it? There. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, now let's fix the clock. Your own. 